we cannot stop talking about hematology because it's just amazing. Today's topic is ABO blood groups. We are talking about hematology and hemolytic anemia, especially hemolytic disease of the newborn. One of the most common causes of hemolytic disease of the newborn are ABO incompatibility. But before we know what ABO incompatibility is, let's first discuss ABO system. As you know, immune hemolytic anemia has three different subtypes. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia, the most common, you have the warm subtype and the cold subtype. Of the warm subtype, please don't forget lupus and CLL. Second, drug-induced hemolytic anemia, and we have discussed that before. Alloimmune hemolytic anemia, which is our topic now. Alloimmune hemolytic anemia is further subdivided into hemolytic disease of the newborn and alloimmune hemolytic transfusion reaction. Of the hemolytic disease of the newborn or HDN, we have RH disease and ABO incompatibility. Of the two, ABO incompatibility is more common, but RH is more severe. Okay, so here is your nice red blood cell. There are literally hundreds of antigens on the red blood cell surface. Most of them are clinically insignificant, that's why we don't study them. Unless you won the Nobel Prize in Hematology, and you, of course you are from a different planet, but anyways. ABO system and the RH system are two separate groups of antigen. Today's topic is ABO system. ABO system has two antigens, A antigen and B antigen. O antigen does not exist, as we'll discuss later. So here is your great ABO system, two antigens, A and B. There is no such thing as O antigen. So you can have either A or B, you can have neither, like nothing at all, or you can have both A and B simultaneously. These antigens are called agglutinogen. Gen means they will genesis, they will produce another thing. They will produce what? They produce antibodies to these antigens. These antibodies are called agglutinin. Anything that ends in 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 medicine is a protein. And no wonder, any active substance in your body is a protein. Take it to the bank. How about an antibody? Is it active? Yes, it binds to an antigen and agglutinates, so it's active. How about the sodium-potassium pump? Yeah, it's active. It's a protein, okay? Anything that's active is a protein. What about an enzyme? Protein, again. All right. We have two antigens, but we have four blood types. A, B, AB, or O. These blood types are also called the phenotypes because they are the expressed form of the genetics. With regards to the genetic locus, we have three alleles, IA, IB, and IO. In short, we call them A, B, or O. Allele means different gene forms. So one gene present in more than one form we call these forms alleles. I stands for immunoglobulin. A is dominant, B is dominant, O is recessive. So if you have AO together, which one is dominant? A. So the blood group, the phenotype resulting will be only A. What if you have BO, which one is dominant? B. So the phenotype will be blood group B. If A and B are together, this is called co-dominance. Both alleles contribute to the phenotype of the heterozygote. Heterozygous, why? Because A and B are different. They are not homozygous, they are heterozygous. Next, let's talk about the genotypes. You have two chromosomes, one from mommy and one from daddy. You should say thank you. And you have three alleles, A, B, and O. 2 times 3 equals 6. You have 6 possible combinations, 6 probabilities of alleles. We call these genotypes 
They are the genetic information inside of you. What appears in the outside is called the phenotype. These are different. So you can have OA, OO, OB, AA, AB, or BB. These are the six probabilities. So let's take an example here. Let's say you have two chromosomes for this trait. One from mommy, one from daddy. One is O and one is A. So what's the combination here? What's the genotype? The genotype is OA. Okay, what are the alleles? One of them is O, one of them is A. How about the blood type or the phenotype? O and A, which one is dominant? A, so the blood type is only A. How about the antigen? If your blood group is A, you have antigen called A. That's it. There is no such thing as O antigen. Your blood group A, you have A. So the phenotype is blood group A. The genotype is OA. We don't care about this unless you're studying genetics. What we care about is your blood group is A. So ABO system, you have two antigens, four blood types, three alleles, six genotypes. So let's play this game. These are the six probabilities or the genotypes, okay? If you have OO, the blood type is O, recessive, recessive, so it's O. Antigens, okay, there is no such thing as the O antigen. When you don't have antigen, you create antibody to anything foreign, to the non-self. So you will have anti-A antibody and anti-B antibody. If your genotype is OA or AA, doesn't matter because A is dominant, so the blood type is A in either case. Antigen is A. How about the antibody? Since I have A, I cannot make an antibody against myself. This is stupid, okay? So I don't have anti-A, but I have anti-B because I do not have the B antigen. If the genotype is OB or BB, which one is dominant? The B, so the blood type is B. How about the antigen? B antigen? Anti-A? Yes. Anti-B? No. I already have the antigen. The genotype is AB. The phenotype is AB. Antigens? A and B. Antibodies? No. If I have antibodies, I'll destroy myself. Again, this is stupid. How about the prevalence of the blood types in the general population? It differs among countries, but generally, like in the United States, it's 47% of the population are blood group O, 41% blood group A, 9% blood group B, 3% blood group AB. Is it O negative or O positive? This is the story of the RH system in the next video. Agglutinins antibodies against the antigens. These agglutinins are gamma globulins. Question, where are these gamma globulins formed? Where's the factory? If you answer the liver, you're crazy. If you answer the immune system, you're absolutely right. Remember, agglutinins are antibodies. If you know anything about white blood cells, you know that there is something called the B lymphocyte. The B lymphocyte will have plasma cells. They are special type of the B lymphocytes. Plasma cells will produce antibodies. So where is the factory? Answer, bone marrow. Okay, we're good. So, these antibodies could be either IgM or IgG antibodies. So, when the baby is born, just immediately after birth, you have zero antibodies. Okay, then the baby is subjected to antigen. Why? The baby puts its, his finger in his mouth, breastfeeding, again, the breast and nipple, no matter how clean mommy is, they have bacteria. The baby eats food, again, they have bacteria. All of these bacteria will carry antigens with them. The baby now has antibodies against these antigen. So if the baby is blood group A, one of the antigen entering his body will be B. So he will form anti-B antibody to protect himself from strangers, from non-self. 
two to eight months of age postpartum, the baby starts forming antibodies due to exposure to these factors. If the baby doesn't have a agglutinogen, he or she will produce anti-A. If I don't have A, I will have anti-A. If I don't have B, I'll have anti-B. Antibody concentration, they will peak at 10 years of age, then gradually decline. So here is your timeline. You're at zero at birth, then peak at 10 years of age, then decline, gradually decline until you die. Antigen plus antibody agglutination will occur. So when you go to the hospital, before you receive any blood, before any surgery, before organ transplant, they do something called blood typing or blood matching. They get your nice blood here, two drops on a slide, then they add anti-A antibody and anti-B antibody each to a separate side of the slide. So if you agglutinate only here, which means you have the A antigen, that's why you agglutinated with the anti-A, Okay, so your blood group is A. If you agglutinate it only on the B side, which means you have the B antigen, that's why you agglutinated with anti-B, so the blood group is B. If the reaction occurred in both sides, which means you have both A antigen and B antigen, so your blood group is AB. If you didn't agglutinate at all, you don't have any antigen because the O antigen doesn't exist and the blood group is O. That's it for today. Remember, we have the ABO system and the RH system. Antigens are bound to the red blood cell surface. Antibodies are floating in the plasma peacefully. I'll see you soon. Please subscribe.